Kuchu. ជាបន្តនេះអង្គប្រះប្រកាសបន្តកិច្ចចំណាយការនេះទេវិធីហើយជាបន្តនេះអង្គប្រះដល់វិធីការជួនទៅសាបរញ្ញានិងសហមិត
ក្នុងរយៈពេលក្នុងពេលតែមួយឲ្យទាំងអស់នៅលើវិសាលភាពនៃសំណុំរឿងសូនសូនពីទាំងមូលតែម្ដងទេហើយដើម្បីដឹង
ហើយនឹងហើយបានជាខ្ញុំផ្ដល់នៃការពិចារណាពីពិភាក្សាការឆ្លើយទៅនឹងសំណួរទី ซากรัมจําบัดได้แต่ซากรัมจําบัดได้ในเพดาบัดจับสวรรค์การเวลนอตบีอเวอร์ดิกต์ออนเดอะเดย์ออฟเดอะคลอสซิ่งสปีชิ
I think reinforced the argument as to why this one and only trial should be reasonably representative. I mean, what you've said, and certainly you'll hear our views on this later, you don't want me to talk about it now, we see it as an extremely problematic proposal to move to a second trial while you're still writing the first judgment. That's always been our position. So I think in a sense, what you've said actually reinforces the position of the prosecutor that this first case does need to be reasonably representative. And if you're talking about months in terms of writing a judgment, we're talking about weeks in terms of hearing further evidence. So yes, we accept what you you're saying, but we believe it actually supports our position that this, this trial should be more representative, that we should follow the guidance. Indeed, we must follow the guidance that is given by the Supreme Court chamber. Now, in terms of answering this particular question, um, again, it's linked to the first two questions. We do not oppose severance, but we do and we always have opposed the scope of the severance order. And the reason for that goes back to what I said uh, in the other two submissions is that the case as it stands at the moment does not follow the international legal position, which is that the reduced case should, as far as possible, in the difficult circumstances that exist in this court, and I'll, and I'll come to that, it should be reasonably representative of the entire closing order. And again, I know you want me to address this later on, but I'll say it now because it's linked. You can, of course, when you are considering that test, bear in mind the particular circumstances that exist in this case, that the accused are elderly, that they are frail. Indeed, in terms of our request, what we are going to ask for, we've taken that into account. You have to balance that. And indeed, the proposition that we are going to make to you is, we believe, in our submission, the best one in the circumstances, bearing in mind the particularly problematic circumstances of this trial. ពីប្រព័ន្ធនៃកិច្ចកម្មការនីតិវិធីនៅក្នុងសាលាដំបូងនេះបាទអរគុណជាបន្តសម្រាប់ពិតិការជូនទៅសាមិត្តវីនាម
ហើយរួចសហព្រិញ្ញាហើយរួចសហព្រិញ្ញាពេលនឹងមុខតំណាងដើមមកដល់ដប់នេះរដែលដើម្បីឆ្លើយនឹងសោតមកសំណួរទី
that particular point on one side because I don't believe it is something that should be relevant for your consideration and I think there are other very compelling reasons why you should include S21 within this case. Let me now address you on this issue of representativeness. Now, as I've said, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to avoid repeating myself, but unfortunately this does lend itself to a certain degree of repetition. We seek to have included in this case Tulpul Trey and S21. As far as Tulpul Trey is concerned, we agree with the reasons that you set out in paragraph 3 of your memorandum of the 8th of October of 2012, that's E1635, its connection with the forced transfer of Now, moving on to this principle of reasonable representativeness when severing, we submit that in the context of an indictment at the ECCC, this is a principle that should be applied, and indeed the Supreme Court Chamber directed you to apply it. Now, Rule 89 Ter of our own internal rules for this court allows for severance when the injustice of justice required. But that rule does not elaborate on what factors you should actually take into account when you are engaged in the severance process. In such a situation, we submit in accordance with the agreement and the statute that you are required to look to international law to guide you. As I said, the Supreme Court Chamber affirmed that approach. They recognised that the severance process required severed indictment be reasonably representative of the fault in indictment, particularly where there is concern about having more than one case. They held that that approach is directed by common sense of meaningful justice and conforms with comparable international legal standards. And in reference to those international standards, you will find that the Supreme Court Chamber held at paragraph 42 and I believe paragraph 38 the Supreme Court Chamber decision that international standards were reflected in Rule 73 bis D of the ICTY Rules of Procedure and Evidence. Now, I'm not going to read that out and say time. Um, I'm sure your legal officers will obtain a copy of it for you. But in saying what that rule says in the Yugoslav Tribunal is that severance requires that any reduction of counts or tribe sites or incidents must be done in a way that what is left in the closing order in our case is reasonably representative of the full indictment. Now that rule includes certain factors which should be considered by you in order to ensure that the indictment is reasonably representative. Now, there are six factors mentioned in that rule, and there are further two factors that have arisen because of case law. At the Yugoslav Tribunal, in addition to two factors, which I believe I will, uh, will also assist you and I'll make very brief submissions on them. Now, the first factor that you have to consider are the actual crimes charged in the indictment. What are the crimes charged in the indictment? Secondly, what is the classification of those crimes? Now, the classification of those crimes. Thirdly, the nature of those crimes. Now, you can see that those three issues are actually very much linked together. I'll try and unpack them, but they are really, I think, issues that you need to consider together. Now, the fourth issue relates to the place where the crimes are alleged to have been committed. The fifth issue is the scale of the crimes. The sixth is the victims of the crimes. And then a further two 
issues, which, as I say, are incorporated into this matrix by reason of case law, and that's the time period over which the crimes took place. And then the last point, which I think is a very important one in this case, is the fundamental nature or theme of the case. Let's look at the first point. The crimes that have been charged in the closing order. Severance requires that the crimes retained are reasonably representative of the original indictment. Now, the crimes in the severed indictment must be of the same severity and variety as those in the closing order as a whole. And again, I emphasise what I said a moment ago. I believe that you should balance against all of these factors the age and health of the accused. In applying this test, I think you have to do that. That is why we have come up with the formulation that we are going to offer you, because we accept that that is something that you do need to weigh against these facts. Now, the addition of S21, to the annulled severance order to a new severance order, will significantly increase the representativeness of the indictment in terms of the charge. The charges associated with S21 are murder, extermination, enslavement, imprisonment, torture, political persecution, racial persecution, and other inhumane acts through attacks against human dignity. Also, Recall your honours that S21 addresses a number of great breaches of the Geneva Conventions that we currently don't have in, in, in the case as it stood prior to the appeals decision. Willful killing is a grave breach, torture is a grave breach, inhumane treatment as a grave breach, willfully causing great suffering as a grave breach, willfully depriving a prisoner of war to a fair trial, grave breach, unlawful deportation of civilians, grave breach, unlawful confinement of civilians, grave breach. So the inclusion of S21 would lead to the incorporation into this case of four additional charges of crimes against humanity, enslavement, imprisonment, torture, and other inhumane acts through attacks on human dignity, and four unique grave breaches of the Geneva Convention, willfully causing great suffering, willfully depriving a prisoner of war to a fair trial, Unlawful deportation of civilians and unlawful confinement of civilians. Now, it's even arguable that actually, although willful killing as a grave breach addresses murder as a crime against humanity, that there are unique elements within the grave breaches provisions which actually do make it a separate crime. I don't want to split hairs over this, but certainly you can see that if you incorporate S21, you incorporate a whole array of additional charges providing a greater scope and a much more reasonable representation of the indictment as a whole. Let me look very quickly at classification of crimes, the second factor which this test would offer you to consider in coming to a new severance report. Severance requires that the classification of the crimes charged are reasonably representative of the original indictment. Now, as you know, in the original closing order, those crimes belong to genocide, arguably, a very, very serious crime against humanity, but nevertheless, the provision of crimes against humanity grave breaches of the Geneva Convention and also national crimes under the Cambodian Code of Criminal Procedure. Now, at the moment, we are addressing a single group of crimes, crimes against humanity, including S21, would incorporate great breaches of the Geneva Conventions. You wouldn't be addressing all the crimes or all the different classifications of crimes in the closing order, you would be addressing substantially more than you are now.
person by young that we chose some play much young I just right to look on your hand this round you know whether you can pull the crimes you must address this to you know that's right from that little like a lot of the nature of the crimes charged the carbon by kid I'm not gonna stay with you I'm right I like a lot of it but of course linked to me and keep you the man I want to call the lady cabin to do the kingdom to me from there now the nature of the crimes charged relates to the similarities and differences in the core elements of each crime within a similar class. So, for example, within the category of crimes against humanity, murder and extermination would be similar to crimes with similar core elements because they both are also involved in lawful killings. However, the murder and extermination would be different to imprisonment, but we don't have the indictment in the old severance order. So I've said a moment ago, the breaches provisions again contain unique elements, one of which is included freedom of action. Now, the nature of the crimes charged in the court of law is different from the nature of the crimes. The room in Chopin, 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 Imprisonment and other inhumane acts, wilful killing, grave breach, torture, grave breach, inhumane treatment, grave breach, willfully causing great suffering. I won't repeat my thoughts on this already, but you can see that within these other crimes, there are unique elements that are not present in the current law that are currently being addressed by the chamber. Fourthly, I need to address you on Places where crimes are committed. Severance requires that the places where the crimes are committed are reasonably representative of the original indictment. That means that the crimes in the severed case must be geographically reflective of the crimes in the original indictment. So, for example, where crimes occurred in the original indictment across a variety of places within the country, the severed indictment charges are possible to reflect that. Consequently, the severed indictment charges are possible to reflect that. Consequently, the severed indictment charges are possible to reflect that. Conversely, where crimes occur in one place, it would be appropriate to sever the case to exclude crimes outside that one localized place. Now, the addition of S21 to this case would actually significantly increase the representativeness of the places where crimes were committed in the indictment. I know that you disagree with that proposition because you say, well, S21 actions are very limited. Well, S21 was located in one geographical area, it in fact is more reasonably representative of the commission crimes committed by the criminalists Eastern and West, and if you read the allegations in the closing law, you will find that it actually supports the proposition. I'm not going to go through all of it, but let me just give you a few examples. If you go to paragraph 431 of the closing order, States, CP cards, members of the RAK who were arrested, chemical and automatic sentences and Cambodia. Next, paragraph 434, for the arrest and transfer of CPK cartridges and RAK members from autonomous regions or zones. Two methods were used. In some cases, S21 personnel would go to the zones and make arrests. Arrested by the zone units and then returned to Phnom Penh. In other cases, CPK cadres and RAK members were summoned to Phnom Penh by Office 870, and in particular by Nguyen Chia, officially for a meeting, and they just disappeared, never to be seen again. Paragraph 437 of the closing order. 
the arrest of Vietnamese civilians and soldiers generally took place in the main conflict zone. So you can see that in fact, contrary to what you say in your, your memorandum suggesting that it's very, very limited in geographical scope, in fact, S21 is wide in geographical scope and it's sat on a place uh, back to get part of the test. The fifth factor that you've got to consider, which I've mentioned already, is the scale of crime. Any severance requires that the scale of crimes charged are reasonably representative of the original closing order. This means that crimes in the severed indictment need to reflect the full extent of the original of the crimes in the original indictment or closing order. Now, it's our submission that the addition of S21 and the new severance will significantly increase the representativeness of the scale of the crimes obtained in the indictment. What is this case about? This case is principally about the untimely death or murder of 1.27 million people who perished between 1975 and 1979. S21 represents the magnitude and severity of the crimes in this case. Crime within the closing order. Just a couple of factors for you to consider. Um, if you look at the closing order, paragraph 122. Uh, S21 was the most important security centre in democratic Kampuchea. It was considered to be an organ of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. Its management reported to the highest echelons of the party. It conducted activities on a national scale. A senior level cadres and important prisoners were held there. We know from the first case that at least 12 ហើយដែលយ៉ាងហោចណាស់ particular factor requires that any new case, any severed case, is reasonably representative of the original indictment in terms of victims, groupings of victims, in particular ethnic groups. Now, if you look at the original closing order, the entire population of Cambodia is considered as victims of the crimes charged. Now, in relation to the policy of implementing and defending the CPK Socialist Revolution, human re-education, the battle of the killing of enemies both inside and outside the party ranks by whatever means necessary, the victims were from two groups, internal enemies and external enemies. Now, external enemies included, first of all, the Chinese, secondly, the Buddhists, former officials of the Khmer Republic, including civil servants and former military personnel and their families. Internal party enemies included members of the CPK and the RAK. If you look at the annulled severance order, the victims' groups with regard to the first population related exclusively to external party enemies, so city dwellers, new people and former civilians. Similarly, if you look at the second population, the groups transferred were largely external to the party in the RAK. These groups included, again, former city dwellers, former civil servants, Chan, Khmer Krom, and Chinese. 
Now, with regard to Tolpol Tre, the victim groups were external party enemies such as former command, public officials, soldiers, as well as people with bad biographies and viewed to be undisciplined in the cooperatives. In contrast, if you look at S21, the majority of the victims were entirely internal party members of the CPK leadership. The, this internal enemy group, I think, can be broken down into subgroups, the most significant of which are members of the revolutionary army of Cambodia, with the next most significant being members of the CPK cadres. In both of these groups, the positions of these victims range from the very highest to the lowest within the CPK. More specifically, there were cadres from the ministries for which these accused were principally responsible. For example, 209 victims were from Office 870 and S71, and at least 113 from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and 482 from the Ministry of Commerce. These victims came from across the entire country, and the influx and type of prisons directly related to the purges conducted around the country. Other groups which were not CPK cadres or RAK military were former soldiers, officials of the Khmer Republic, former members of the National United Front of Cambodia, members of the educated classes, teachers, professors, students, doctors, lawyers and engineers. Of the non-Cambodian victim groups of S21, the Vietnamese were in the largest and the but also people from Thailand, Laos, India and Western countries, United States, Australia, Australia. Absolutely apparent that if you include S21, you increase the victim groups that would be represented, people that will find justice. The gun, but justice will be for a wider group of victims. Let me talk about the last two factors that you need to consider. First of all, the time period. Although this is a factor that's not explicitly recognised, I'm going to ICTY Road 373SD case law. At the tribunal, it has emerged that severance should ensure that the time period of the crimes charged are reasonably representative of the original indictment. For example, a severed indictment should be reasonably representative of the months or years over which the crimes were committed. Second, the severed case should try and reflect, as far as possible, any key phases in the commission of those crimes. Hence, the case which supports that proposition is the prosecutor and Stanisic and Smartovich, S-T-A-N-I-S-I-C, Smartovich, S-I-M-A-T-O-V-I-C Case IT-0369-PT Decision pursuing 73-D of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence and I'll give the date of this the date of that decision for the purposes of reference is the 4th of February 2008. Paragraph 23 is the relevant part of that judgment. Now, the addition of S21 to this case will significantly increase the representativeness of the time period. In contrast to the forced transfer, which, as the trial chamber has pointed out, occurred right at the beginning of the chronology of this terrible story. It's very, very limited. It's a limited period of time. Now, S21 
became operational in October of 1975 and remained in operation until the 7th of January 1979. So you wouldn't have to be the entire time period of the closing order by the time period of the closing order. Now the last issue to consider again by case law uh, from uh, the ad hoc tribunals. Uh, again, it's not a factor that's explicitly recognized in 73 bis D, but chambers have incorporated this particular factor in the matrix that they use to decide on how a case should be severed. And they say that severance should reasonably represent the fundamental nature or theme of the case. Now, you can find the law on this in the Stanislavs and Martinovich decision, which I mentioned in paragraphs 8 and 9, essentially supporting this part of the test. The addition, Your Honours, of S21 really reflects the whole of this case. If you look at the common purpose of the joint criminal enterprise, it states that the common purpose was to implement rapid socialist revolution in Cambodia through a great leap forward, a defendant party against internal and external enemies by whatever means necessary. Now that common purpose is said to have come into effect on the 17th of April of 1975 and continued until the 6th of January of 1979. Now, as things stood, in the now annulled severance order, we were addressing principally the force movement of the population. Only one of five criminal policies identified as being part of the joint criminal enterprise in the closing order, the paragraph 157. By including S21, you are not only covering the entire period of the joint criminal enterprise, but you will also be addressing three of the five criminal policies expressed in the joint criminal enterprise within the closing order. In conclusion on this issue of representativeness, this case the heart of this case, although there were multiple types of crimes committed during this period of time, the heart of this case is about arrest, torture and murder at security centres. The accused have been charged in respect of 11 security centres. S21 is one of those security centers directly connected to the standing committee, directly connected to the standing committee, an important factor bearing in mind the accused that we are dealing with. So, in conclusion, Your Honours, and let me just check that I've actually answered all of your questions. Uh, um, I would emphasize that contrary to what you say here, in fact, the inclusion of S21, we're not now asking for District 12 because we have gone through this balancing act of looking at the health and fitness of the accused and we're not now pursuing that any longer. But we do believe that S21 in fact, represents a very large proportion of the types of victims who suffered in this country. And we do believe that it encompasses, for the reasons I won't repeat, a significant geographical area because victims came from all over Cambodia. And I think... I've covered in some depth this concept of representativity, uh, which the Supreme Court Chamber directed your minds to address when you make your next decision. So thank you, Your Honours. I don't have any further comments. Thank you. Thank you. 
xung group lục thiên tam gặp bất dương khiêm bình miền này vậy nhưng bình thay mấy chuyện thì dương khiêm quan tro nơi ở vây để bàn lược làng đòi tầm nang xã hạp rìa nhà ở đòi xã hạp rìa nhà ở trại chiết hay để bàn lược làng nơi cao vị phía mùi để miền lại cái này mọt chót hay bị chạm bị phía tầm nang để cua tập bị chạm là hay tam gặp bất khang đam bình đồng rót vịnh nhi miền đam bình đồng rót vịnh nhi để bàn tập tua rong nơi bọt lầm mơ group propet hơi đam bình đồng rót vịnh nhi tiền khmer tiền chám tiền ở việt nam tiền chun chít sim sim chít có sát tay tập tua rong nơi bọt lầm mơ để ukraine cam để bàn tập cắt lang nơi không số máy bảy năm trăm bảy khay nhi hơi dùng nhôm trắng na ở miền ca cắt cái đây từ lơ bọt lầm mơ sim sim khi này đại miền phía bẹ còn nia nia đôi chạy bàn lực nơi không đại ca đầm nó sai còn một tết ở xa than phía chợ sài để mình ăn chơi ruồi nhưng khi mình chọn ở miền ca cắt cái đây không than phía đại vì mình ăn chơi than phía chợ sài mình ăn nhà được được chưa thì được chưa này dùng kim quan trâu nữa với đại bàn lực lang đòi giải hạp rìa nhà các hai dùng kim trang sông bình tham tích hà chụp cua bành hà sau một hơi muối đi đã giải hạp rìa nhà anh đã chết bàn lực lang chỉ cá tầm trâu một phút hơi một giang vinh tiết đảm bảo đồng loạt với nhau dùng kim được nông cạn đi sơn sơn pi đi có miến nẹt đại chi bột cua sầm mạnh trở ban bình chun từ sau một hơi muối đi đây đại miền lục ông chung mấy hay năng lục ông bu mình để bàn chọc khung khen cầm tay bên này có quạt nơi miền ruộng riêng miền chỉ vận bên này hai cặp bông tai đồng hao dưới ruộng dưới đất thò sản phẩm của quạt với trên này có chỉ phép tầm nang muối để cua tai bị chà nè phòng tai hay khi nhầm bạn mình miền vậy vật thêm thế sầm ác quân lục thiên bà ác quân lấy nước phê sầm sầm mông tầm rạ thay tròn hơi họ nhìn về phần cả sầm rạ chấp cái pin thì tới tới hỗ trợ mong muối sản phẩm này thì được xin lý do mà chơi cho vinh cho mấy bên to cái chấm nào cả sầm nào cả sầm rạ cho xong các cho